Hi, this is Emily Craven doing the Chili Emmy Challenge 2015. Um, this is like the ice bucket challenge for ALS that went around last year, but it's for myalgic encephalomyelitis, which is a neurological disease that was discovered in um, London in the 1950s and rebranded chronic fatigue syndrome by the CDC in the 1980s. Um, the CDC estimates that one to four million Americans suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome currently, and uh, patient organizations put the number of patients that are housebound or bedbound, which is me, at 25% of the population, the patient population that's currently diagnosed. Uh, it's very difficult to get medical care and also really to get disability for this illness because it is so poorly understood and we do not have a good diagnostic criteria. Currently it takes six months that you have to be ill with um, I think it's four, it is four of eight symptoms on their checklist for the CDC diagnostic criteria. And then you have to wait usually two, three years uh, for your disability to be denied and appealed and you go to court, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a really quite a while um, where patients have no financial support at all. And even when the disability does come through, it's not enough to live on, uh, certainly not for someone disabled. And often um, we don't get adequate medical care, even if we have the um, Medicaid, Medicare coverage that comes with um, social security disability, simply because our doctors do not understand this illness. Okay. So basically what we have is people that end up living alone with no support that are not able to feed themselves reliably or take care of their basic needs. We have people staying in abusive situations simply to have food and shelter, really basic, basic necessities. And the point that I'm trying to make is this isn't just an illness awareness situation, it's a social, social justice issue. So um, it's really important that we get this across. Anyway, um, part of this illness is that you have brain fog, you have trouble processing information, getting your thoughts in order, and coming up with words, which I'm now experiencing. So. Um, basically what we're doing is we're trying to find research to look for biomarkers um, and to understand this illness better. What we really, really need is a test that can definitively identify this illness that any doctor can run, and to do that we need to understand more about it. So the donations for this um, Chile ME um, publicity stunt, no, it's not a publicity stunt, <laughs> awareness campaign, go to, um, in Britain, if you want to donate to them, invest in ME, they're working on trials of rituximab, which is a drug that has been really promising in phase one and phase two trials in Norway, um, for, I think, 60%, 61, 63, something like that, percent of the patients that got rituximab, had some degree of remission in their ME. All right, the other uh, organization is the Columbia Center for Infection and Immunity at um, Columbia University in New York, and it is run by uh, Dr. Ian Lipkin, who is very prestigious if you're writing about SARS or MERS or Ebola for the New York Times. He's the person that you call after you call the CDC um, to get your second quote. And he has finally gotten some um, funding to do this a little bit, um, not as much as we need 
from the National Institute of Health. It took him four tries, and this is somebody who pretty much gets the funding that he needs for any other project, but couldn't get his ME-CFS research funded. Um, and I'm also going to throw in here um, the Open Medicine Foundation out here in California that is looking for biomarkers in severe, like very, very severe patients um, who've never been studied because they can't get into a clinic. They're stuck in bed and um, can't be moved. Okay, so that's the long-winded introduction of why this is important and why we need it. Let's see, I was supposed to do this a month ago, six weeks ago. I don't know. Anyway, the, the chili that I finally talked my mom into buying. She didn't want to do it. She was afraid that it would mess me up. Um, we have a lot of digestive issues, uh, th these patients. Anyway, it's fuzzy now. So I'm really sorry. I'm not gonna be able to eat a chili for you. Um, but I do have peppercinis and I'm gonna eat some of those. And I promise you the light simply to make this video um, visible is <laughs> putting me in enough pain that I will be in as much pain um, as the chili for everyone else. All right, now I'm supposed to nominate people, but given the fact that most of my friends, a lot of my friends, have their Facebooks and social networking attached to um, their startups and their um, not home businesses, um, whatever. The businesses where they're the sole proprietor, their business is linked with their Facebook page. Um, anyway, given that and the stigma that goes with this disease, I don't want to be forcing people to donate money or do something that will cost them money um, or clients or their reputation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call out Kelly Healy to do it, um, because I know she will. <laughs> She's already done so much and this is her reward <laughs> to eat chilies. Um, and then I'm gonna ask for volunteers from the old Reed group. I know that some of us are still kind of in touch and I would just love it if you would, if somebody would volunteer to do this. Um, and then also a volunteer from Tahoe or my family to just eat a chili pepper, make a video, and I'll post below all the links 